Welcome to the Stickman Podcast. I'm Reggie Kimball, a.k.a. Stickman number one. Whew. Let me take a deep breath, y'all. One more time. I got my boy Stickman Simp. What up? Let's do it. Hey, if you're in the mood, or if you just love, in the mood, in the love, whatever I'm trying to say, Stickman mm-hmm. Simp. Got you. Got you. If you love a good cigar, if you love some good whiskey, and you like having good conversations about it, you came to the right place. Our goal is to make sure that you leave with a little bit more knowledge than what you came in here with. So, you know, Puff Sip Chat Repeat, that's what we talk about. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and hit that little alert notification bell so you know when the next time is up. All right? Here we go. Stick me in podcast. I got two special guests in the house. You know how we do it. You know how we do it. We do our whiskey reviews. We got cigar reviews coming soon. But this is the one. The Quark Brothers, y'all. Sub dog diggities. Yeah, the Quark Brothers Emphasis in the house. Emphasis on little knowledge for the podcast. Please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Leave so, with a little knowledge. Th- these brothers here are going to make us look good today. <laughs> there you go. They're going to make go. us look good today. So I'm here with Andrew and Mike from the Quark Brothers. And you know what? I'm a, we're going to tell everybody what the Quark Brothers actually is in a second. Some of them already know because y'all doing your damn thing on oh, social yeah. media. Exactly. But um, I want y'all to introduce yourselves and just tell people who y'all are. Who we goes first? The Cork Bros. I'm Andrew, and this is Mike. We are the Cork Bros because we both have Cork in our last name. Mine's the Corko. <laughs> Mine's Cork Rum. <laughs> and we the dog love diggities, it. man. Love it, love it, love it. Look, <laughs> the dog diggities. So I'm, I'm Mike Cork Rum. Find uh-huh. me as Sir Cork Rum. This is Andrewski, if we want to get technical. But anyways, guys, we out here on the Stickman blog. We um, yeah, Stickman we, Studios, baby. Uh, the Stickman yeah, Studios. Studios, Studios, baby. It's outside. We're just in the green room. Yeah. Y'all don't get to they, see. They it. were in the green. Y'all on the other side of the camera. <laughs> but you see the results of the green room. We make it happen. Mm-hmm. A little sippy mm-hmm. sip. Okay. A little puffy puff. Yeah. Matter of fact, before we get into more about the Cork Brothers, what yeah. you puffing on today, man? I am puffing on a. For right now, an Oliva V series. Oh, because you're about to kill that shit. Yeah, it's about come to with something dead. else. That's my favorite one. <laughs> Great but stick. I came to Honor Cigars. Troy is the owner of Honor Cigars. He personally rolled this for me at the cigar cellar in Kennesaw. This wow. Nice. Yeah. Okay, good so one. I figured this would be a good opportunity to light it up. Shout, shout out to Cigar Cellar. Shout out to the cigar. Did cigar you, no, you say it. Shout out to Cigar Cellar. Thank you. We think too, we've been I doing know. this shit too long. It's that Capricorn connection. Sigma said, what you smoking? I am smoking on a Baccarat, okay? Mm-hmm. In 1871, you guys know what that's all about. Mm-hmm. I am puffing on a Baccarat. And it gives I'm quality. The same thing, so I'm not gonna repeat that shit. <laughs> exactly, you know what it's all about. And Mike, what you uh, what you smoking, on? man? What I'm, you puffing? I'm puffing on that um that O2. <laughs> so, uh, I love it. O2. I love it. There's a little nitrogen in the air too. <laughs> <laughs> that shit is keeping you alive. Uh, exactly. You know, it, uh, it fills my lungs. <laughs> <laughs> so, in case you didn't know. He's the healthy one of the crew. Yeah, man. That's why he's looking. Stand up, show the camera, do a little turnaround. Gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. See, that's why I wanted y'all on the stand up podcast. Love it. Love it. I knew we were going to cut up and have a good time, Absolutely. man. So I appreciate y'all coming on. So, Puff Sip in the chat today, for those who don't know, the chat is just about kicking it with these brothers, man. And the Cork Brothers, for those who don't know what the Cork Brothers is, tell them what it is. Yo, we do digital marketing, so we do photography, videography, and digital marketing specifically for the beverage and now the cigar industry. Yep. Love so it. All the, uh, all the bevies you guys like to enjoy, the things, you know, might be illicit in some places, and not, <laughs> we, do, we do the marketing for it. Absolutely. Okay. All right. I like that. I, wait, you say illicit in some places? Oh, yeah. I mean, you can't walk around with, uh, with a cocktail everywhere. Oh, that's true. You know, see, that's I got to get my head out of the gutter because my mind went somewhere. Yeah, I was, I was wondering you know, what the heck you were talking about. Yeah, 
<laughs> a recently cousin in Atlanta right now, you can kind of walk around with with a drink. There are certain in certain yeah, parts. In certain yeah. parts. Yeah. parts like yeah. Line, different places. Exactly. So I, was used to that. so I was in LA a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I went to this Mexican spot, got a beer with my burrito. Then we went to this like park in the city. Then uh, I, I had two. I was two sips in. Two sips. This in. cop comes in. He's like, "Excuse me, you can't have this alcohol." You know, out and about. I was like. I take it. I'm not gonna fight you on it. But like, <laughs> yeah, because we exactly. know how that shit exactly. goes. Yeah, exactly. We know how that goes. Yeah, right. But go ahead, keep yeah. going. No, no. Legit. So, um, so it shocked me because I feel like in Atlanta, in Georgia, especially mm-hmm. the Atlanta area, they've yep. been real lax with it. Yeah. yeah. So then I went back, you know, went or not back, but I went to LA and they were like, I told you two sips in, just put it down, and it was gone. What? Yeah. Okay. That's crazy. Wow. Hold on. You said you put it down, it was gone. You put it down, and somebody. Took it? Oh no! The cop came in and told me I had to dispose of it. Oh, you had to pour it out. Yeah, I, or throw it in. The Did trash. you cry? We need to have a moment of I, silence I for alcohol abuse. You can't show cops weakness. Oh, okay, okay. Because I, because I thought, man, you know what? You're right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But if they had poured out like some of my favorite scotches or oh, something. Oh, if it was a scotch, I'd be like, you're right off strike in. Yeah. <laughs> I might just have to go to jail today. Exactly. exactly. Hopefully, they take me to jail. <laughs> Another thing. Hey, so um. We noticed you guys on Instagram. Mm-hmm. That's where we got connected. And we went and chopped it up with these dudes over at Cigar Cellar. Yep. Hung out, broke some bread, yep. realized we had a lot in common, yep. and realized, hey, they do the media productions. We kind of do the media. We just dabble in a little bit of mm-hmm. media productions. Y'all, 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 y'all are the serious studios. Yeah, yeah. They ain't playing. They ain't playing. Dabbling. We got the greenery in the background. Yeah, exactly. You know, trying to be a little humble. We humble. We, we, we humble, humble, man. We're trying, we we trying to play it down a little bit. We, but we kicked it with these dudes, man. It was all love from the beginning. Had a great time. And now we say we had to do the podcast mm-hmm. and let everybody know what the Cork Brothers is all about because I'm so impressed Absolutely. with your materials, man. Mm-hmm. So tell, when did this all get started for you guys? It was started in 2018, man. January 2000. This is brand new business, and y'all killing it already. So it's even newer than that. It's even newer than that. Uh oh. Okay. Tell everybody what's up. The first nine months of uh, I wouldn't even call it a business. We were a not for profit at the time. Because <laughs> we didn't make any profit at the time. <laughs> Actually, we did the opposite. We lost yeah. your business money when exactly. you brought us on. So. Oh, no. Yeah, so we were doing restaurant marketing because I had about 11 years' experience in the restaurant. Mm-hmm. I did see that. Yeah. Okay. And then Mike went to Babson to get his degree in entrepreneurship. Yep. Okay. Um, did, did business stuff before we did it in West Africa and SF. All, all okay, I got questions about West Africa, but we'll come back to oh, that yeah. later. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, yeah. so what problem were you solving with this yeah. business, man? We were creating problem. problem. That is the problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. So not, not solving, not solving problem. a problem. Yeah, Because, yeah. so. you know, the na- you do know the name of the game in business is when you provide a service is that you're, you're healing a pain point for somebody. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. We didn't realize that. Mike forgot. <laughs> all, Mike went to school for this, and he forgot to no, mention that. We were in business. We thought so, we were. Bro. We thought we were. You're right. But... Honestly, this happens to a lot of people when they start mm-hmm. a business. It stops a lot of people from starting a business is they're not good enough yet to heal anything. Yep. Mm. And that that was our now, issue. In the now beginning. you're kicking some knowledge to the people. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. And you know that stops a lot of people. So they're like, oh, I'm nervous. I don't know if people like this or if, you know I'll help people or if we'll provide value. And yeah, that's what you want to do as a business. Right. When you're first starting, it's a hustle. Yeah. You got to learn these things mm-hmm. on the job in real time because mm-hmm. even if you're doing the same thing as your day job, you're just doing your own thing, mm-hmm. it's different. Yep. It's different. No one's holding your hand. There's nothing to fall back on. That's right. Because yep. typically in a day job, somebody's done it before you. Exactly. exactly. You got to train somehow. Exactly. Right? Yeah. They're giving you- and you can go find the answers. That's right. Exactly. That's right. Facts. Mm-hmm. Facts. And so we created the system from the ground up. So we started off doing restaurant consulting and data analytics. Really? Couldn't even tell you what the fuck we were selling. <laughs> At that point, yeah, we were just yeah. showing up to restaurants and said we could do this. I remember we went in to pitch someone. I said, I will decrease your sales and increase your cost. He said, get the fuck out of the restaurant. You, you was like, <laughs> I was, was like, like wait, wait, I said. I'm like, what are you talking about? Even Mike looked at me like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just leave right now. Yeah. And so that was the first nine months. And we're like, all right. We really want wait, to wait. sell this. Is he still a customer now? Oh, hell he's no. Never a uh, <laughs> he's never, he's never. That, that guy I thought maybe you had somebody that said, let me give these guys wait, a chance because no. they're really struggling <laughs> right now. It wasn't that guy. It wasn't that guy? <laughs> that okay, was all right. The guy. No okay. one gave us a chance in the first time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It was, so it was, how many no's did we get in the row? Uh, 200. I think 250-something. 
Okay. Maybe three hundred. What? I mean, just... Our first yes wasn't even paid. It was just. <laughs> you were like, we didn't <laughs> do, like, do it for free. Yeah. yeah. And we'll so, pay you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so we're like, all right, how do we sell this stuff? Let's provide a service mm -hmm. to get in with the restaurant owner. Mm -hmm. And so we're like, let's try food photography. So but like, you had a hospitality background. Yeah. What did that is that what led you to think of that or what? So I, we, we're we, trying to pitch restaurants. Yeah. So okay. his hospitality background yep. um, put us in like the food industry. Mm -hmm. Like let's pitch restaurants. We can mm -hmm. do all these consulting things. So we're still trying to pitch restaurants when we do the food photography. It's just like let's get a conversation with the owner. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Like if we have dope photos of their mm -hmm. food, we'll be like, hey, let's also talk about this other stuff. Mm -hmm. That was the angle we were going for. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Then we realize after three or four months of doing it, they didn't care about the other shit. It wasn't mm -hmm. working. So we're like, let's just focus on this. And so. That started months and months of just complimentary shoots to build our portfolio. Mm. We'd show up with Mike's Nikon 2011 camera. I saw that, dude. Yeah. yeah. That and thing probably did the job, though. Nope. No. Nope. It did not. Oh, because was, we, didn't well, we didn't know how to use it. We didn't know how to use it. We didn't know any of the settings. Man, I'm right. giving these two dudes way too much credit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't so, know why they on the <laughs> Stickman podcast. Y'all supposed to enlighten people, man. But you know what? It's, 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 great. it's great information because you got to you gotta fall scuff your knees up you and to. and that's that's the best way to learn absolutely that's i don't even want to talk to about learn. the stigma story because oh, that's, yeah. that's a whole that's other a, episode that's a whole another episode because we've gone through the same shit. Yeah. 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 yeah 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 so we would show up to shoots with the camera right with the lenses on it all these different things and we'd only bring it out when we'd see the owner or a manager start coming because we're taking pictures on our phone you know because we only know how to use the phone we didn't know how to change the settings yep. the, the pictures looked way worse we didn't even know how to edit them any of that stuff. So like, see, I'm I'm like amazed right now. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, because I see what you do right now. Yeah, exactly. that's why I'm amazed. Exactly. We yeah. didn't know anything about the cameras, yeah. so we did that for about three or so months, and we're like, yo, we need to start making money off this, and we can't just be selling phone photos to people. Cause like, one big thing about Andrew and I, we, we always want to provide people value. Yes, you have to. So yeah, it's like, if this is going to be a full time job for us, we need to charge people a decent amount. Right. We have to provide them a lot of value to do that. Mm -hmm. yep. So that's when we're like, all right. Let's actually figure out how to use this freaking camera mm -hmm. and how to edit raw photos and all these different things. Mm -hmm. And that started a journey that we're still on right now of learning photography, videography, cinematography, all those different well, things. Well, you're learning it fast. Yeah. 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 I mean, the one thing about Mike, and it disgusts me, <laughs> we can watch a video, I'm like, all right, this is how to do lighting. And then the next time I come to a photo shoot, he's like, yeah, we're doing this. This angle, this angle. I was like, when the fuck did you have time to learn that? <laughs> but he will watch a 10 minute YouTube video and be able to change the game completely. What? Mike is not, he didn't go to college for it. He didn't have a mentor until just last month we started yeah. working with another photographer. But he made that shit happen anyway. Made it happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. So, when you're in a partnership now, you guys are homies. We talked about. Hey, little, homie, this is my dog. That's my dog. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Between homies. Yeah, no. dog. Diggity. Yeah, this dude, man. He even puts dog diggity in his text messages. <laughs> I know he does. Well, you know, but he that's does. a whole other thing. We cool with that though, because I know we will be there. Dog diggity. Dog diggity. <laughs> like, all right, all right. But I know it's coming from a place of love, so it's like it's funny. I love yeah, it. Absolutely. Um, so you know, when you have a business together, man, how do you guys divide up the pie, man? Who does what? So one big thing. Um, and and this is kind of back to our origin story. Mm -hmm. When Andrew and I started, or before we started the business, we knew each other for about a year and a half before then. We played on basketball teams together, like in men's leagues, um, competing for championships together, winning a couple. Um, but and he said you were the key to the championships, exactly, by the way. Exactly, man. He said. Um, he, he, he man, when we first met, he talked about Andrew. Yeah. He was the Jason kid. Be like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. I right, was Jason kid. I was Dirk Nowitzki. <laughs> <laughs> From a brother from another mother. There you go. <laughs> but anyways, um, and then, but but the main thing with us and, and during that year and a half that we didn't even know we were building was we would meet and have these hot tub sessions at like midnight or later. Wait, time. Yeah, y'all gonna have to. I mean, tell you got you got you got to give us a. <laughs> Yes. Wait, hold on. You can't just go right into the hot tub. So you got to set that shit up because, you know, people start thinking some kind of no, way. No, no, no. <laughs> Fix it. Fix it fast. <laughs> Fix it fast. Uh, so, like, you know, we be working out and, and all this stuff. You go to the hot tub and... Okay, I know what you mean. Yeah, like yeah. Y'all at the gym. Y'all at the gym. Yeah, okay. y'all at the gym. We were at okay. okay. He's sitting over there. You sitting over here. Hey, gotcha. Hey, hey. 
Okay. Hot tubs. Hey, okay. Hey. Gotcha. Hot tubs. Hey, okay. Just to show that the stick men are enlightened. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Yeah. Okay. Keep going. No, the thing is, um, you know, Andrew's wife might not appreciate telling the story in such a way. I know she wouldn't appreciate nope. it. She um, told us to actually stop telling that exactly. story. Yeah, you got to. Dude, like, you got to set that shit up better. So we <laughs> met in the hot tub. You got to set Late it up better. Late night at midnight. <laughs> but, but now we have the audience's attention. Yeah. You know you what? Do. You do. You they, everybody's like, they said what? <laughs> so, so, but, but anyways, what happened in the hot tub is we're, uh, we're talking, and in a way we hadn't ever had before. We're talking about insecurities. We're talking about um, goals. All these right. different things that, like, you know, very vulnerable things. Like, as a man, you don't talk to, especially other men, about in your peers because you think you're supposed to take on the world by yourself. That's right, right. right. And That's so, powerful. Yeah, and so we were talking about this stuff, and it built, like, this incredible level of trust. And, like, we didn't even know we were building this yeah. until we started getting into the business. And, like, Andrew, like, I never question Andrew on his stuff. Like, there's times where he'll, like, we should do this. And I'm like, no, nah, we should do like this. Was it his idea, I guess? Or y'all just kind of came up with it together? Uh, for what? For just in general. When oh, we, were, we met at Costco. Yeah. We hadn't met in months. And Mike was like, hey, my friend in San Francisco's got a bar that's really struggling. I know you have this Oh, so that's not. Well, you did solve a pain point. Oh, we never we made never it to San Francisco. Oh, okay. They, asked for, case, <laughs> they asked for a case study. Yeah, uh, that conversation died. We never made it to San Francisco. Yeah, we still haven't been to San Francisco. So you got to circle story. back okay. around it. Wait, hold on. Before okay. we circle, we got to re-up on some drinks. Oh, yeah. We Let's got re-up. Got Let me re-up. re-up. I'm yeah. going to re-up real quick, and then we're going to do this mm-hmm. thing. All right. All right, All right guys. We got a little drink drinks. Yeah, so we just re-upped. And, yeah. but, you know, I just realized I didn't say something early on. What we sipping on, folks? We sipping on, man. And I, so I, I'm going to give myself a pat on the back. For those who haven't been on the Stick Me podcast yet, I like to take care of my guests. And my guest, when I first met him, he sipped some little gin. So I made sure I had gin here for you, bro. He actually has a gin I like to, which is Bombay Sapphire. All right. That's my go to. Mm-hmm. There we go. Delta Flights, Delta Lounge, um, bars at my house. Ain't nothing wrong with a little gin. Matter of fact, in the hot tub. during the summertime, oh, even before I met you, that's what I would drink during the summer is gin. I still drink my whiskey, but yeah. I would lean more towards gin during the summer. Definitely. Yep. And um, and I tried the gunpowder you were talking about. What would you think? Oh, man, that's, that's nice. Gunpowder the, gin is the a shit. The botanicals are nice. It, it's, it, it reminds me of Hendrix. Yeah, it does. Um, right. Hendrix is a little sweeter with botanicals. Yeah. But they both like kind of just give you that whole mouthful. Mm-hmm. Like I tried both of them with martinis in the past couple of days. Okay. okay. So you did it oh, then. Man. Oh, yeah. No, no. Okay. You, you y'all need to know. Mm-hmm. Got martini Mike in the building. Oh shit! <laughs> okay, so next we're gonna episode, have to put you to work on that. Making martinis with Mike. Darn <laughs> too. Darn too. Darn it ain't, too. It ain't magic Mike. It's martini, martini Mike. Martini Mike, baby. <laughs> you want magic Mike? Check the OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! You telling us something? Go ahead, bro. Let's do it. <laughs> there ain't the OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Where were we at? We were talking about how you guys, um, what your division yeah. of responsibilities, because you are a company now. Mm-hmm. You, this is all you do. Yeah. yeah. So Full tell time. us, yeah. Um, so yeah. So um, so the the hot tub story really led into it. Built it built this like level of trust mm-hmm. that we haven't had with anybody else, and I mm-hmm. feel like most people, especially most men, don't have in their lives. Um, Especially when you meet somebody later in life. Yeah. Exactly. It's one thing you meet somebody when you're like childhood friends, yeah. right. but the people you meet as adults, you kind of like, ah. Uh. Yeah. 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 So, um, so it's built this thing where like Andrew and I, we've never had an argument in the business. Mm-hmm. Um, I always trust Andrew's vision. He always trusts my vision because we understand what the overall vision is. Like mm-hmm. a lot of times we have different paths to get there. Andrew like, oh, we should do this. I'm like, no, we, think we should do this. And what we do is. We'll have a conversation. Why yeah. do you think we should do that? Yeah. Then I'll say why I thought we should do this. And then sometimes I'm like, shit, you're right. I was wrong. Sometimes. Uh, <laughs> every once in a while, you know, every once in a while. Sometimes I'm even right and I just let Andrew have it. <laughs> but um but yeah, no, that that like trust at the beginning mm-hmm. made it so we never questioned each other's motives yeah. or what each other was doing or even work ethic. It's mm-hmm. so oh, like yeah. Andrew, okay. I know like he doesn't have to check in with me and let me know what he's doing, you know? He's He's doing stuff, yeah. and 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 then he knows. You just know, you know, he's doing stuff. Exactly, yeah, right. I know he's doing stuff, and then it shows later. 
like if he's yeah. if he's working on a behind the scenes, mm -hmm. if he's um working on reaching out to influencers, X Y Z, mm -hmm. different things that are brands, you know, so we can get product. All those trust things. is huge. Yep. Yeah, trust is huge. Yeah. No, it's huge. And so I do a lot of the content. Or uh, no, that's Mike. Uh, Mike does all the content creation um, on like the big boy cameras and stuff. I do a lot of the behind the scenes with the iPhone and events, mm -hmm. stuff like that. And then I do a lot of the social media. And like reaching out to businesses and the okay. research, what's working on social media, what's not. You know, that's why I like to give you guys advice because you guys. So are this dude, yeah. Andrew, is giving us some phenomenal advice, man. Amazing, and I appreciate Amazing. it. Thank yep. you. Yeah. yeah, we have used it. Nice. Yep. How's it been working? It's been working well. Yep. There it is. I've used that advice, and we will continue to use that advice. That's awesome. Like after this, I got some questions for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, that's, that's Andrew, um, every client we bring on, even sometimes before they um get confirmed as clients. Andrew does a ton of research, whether it's in the industry or if it's an industry we already work in, um, on similar brands and competitors and what they should be doing to elevate themselves to compete with like mm -hmm. the top dogs in mm -hmm. their in their field. Yeah. And it's amazing because like we get to meetings, Andrew's like, oh yeah, check this Instagram post by who should who you should consider your top competitor. We're gonna do something similar, blah blah. blah and blah, they didn't blah. even know. They didn't know. They didn't even know. And yeah. I was looking at them like, I didn't know either. But we can make that. <laughs> <laughs> so, at what point when you guys got this going, man, did you realize, hey, this shit is working? Yeah, I would say about a year and a half ago. Okay. Was we got we finally got the new Sony camera. Mm -hmm. Mike started to grow his skills. I started to grow my knowledge of social media because I didn't have any social media for four years leading up to the mm -hmm. business. So this is, we're both self-taught. From like the ground up, yeah. For what we're doing, and then that that makes it even more impressive. Too, yeah, by the way, we appreciate that. But Yelp reached out and they wanted us to be the photographers, and that was the first time where I was like, "Wow, all right, so we got what? Something. Wow, yeah." So we did. does that like that was like a while ago now? That was like that was like um that was right 2019. Around. To so what do you do for you? Do you like go around to restaurants and take no, so, so businesses? They had, and they had uh, events with like the Yelp Elite. They'd have like thirty or four at a restaurant. The restaurant would compare their best dishes and drinks. They do like a pairing, talk about stuff, and they um, want us to do photos and videos. You know what's and, crazy about those events? So the first one we showed up to was at Not Nacho Daddy in Duluth, mm -hmm. and so we heard beforehand like the photographers. They're kind of like a fly on the wall. You don't really notice them. They're just trying to like snipe shots here yeah. and there, right? Um, so we're all, we also created a video for this event too. So we did photo and video. At the okay. One one single camera, but um, yo, we were the we were the life of the party. Yeah. And that's one big thing we always try to do at our shoots or events. You interact. Yeah, yeah. we're interact. We're telling like, yo, jump on the bar, do this, yo take a shot with this person and yeah, people blah, love blah. that shit yeah instructing them moving people and, and also being part of it too yeah. it's not like it's not like you and us yeah it's all of us we're capturing you guys and all that stuff but it's all of us here having fun together yeah. and that's one of the big things from the yelp thing that we really took to heart was there like people told us afterwards um they started following us on, following us on social and stuff I'm like yo that was the most fun yelp event i've ever been to this is our first one yeah. like th like that and they're was, based on the west coast right um, yeah, Yelp is based on yeah. the West Coast, but like they have an Atlanta. They have Atlanta office. Yeah, okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. So, um, so like they had done events for years beforehand mm -hmm. with many different photographers and videographers, mm -hmm. and like to a man or to a woman, they said this was the most fun they've had at one, and and that's because we got in the action. We're in mm -hmm. the middle of it. We're doing a panoramic selfie in the middle of everybody shooting with the big boy, like all that good stuff, and I think that's what really launched. Yeah what we identify as a brand right now as a corporate that, yeah you don't want to stop that either no, that's no, that's right. who you are and that's yeah everybody tells us the number one thing y'all got going is your energy everybody always says and that energy i ain't gonna lie that's what that's what caught my attention yeah. when we reached out yeah and it's true and we actually before the yelp one we had one other experience where we were bartending an event oh yeah for a company it was like their christmas party this is how we were making money before we were making money yeah <laughs> we didn't make no money yet and yeah we're like they're like hey mike i know you bartend do you think you guys can come and bartend we're like hell yeah how much you paying us yeah and, and so like, yeah. they had a dj and then they had the bar like in the corner or whatever not one person went to the dance floor they all hung around the bar we were taking shots. This is when I was drinking, too. We were taking shots. We were having fun. Stuff like this. We brought a deck of cards. Oh, hold on. So I didn't know you used to drink. I used oh, to yeah. drink. Okay, that's about another years conversation. Drink or yeah. Like that. yep. But uh, we brought a deck of cards. I need to Depending, do that. We had, like, a list. <laughs> Depending on what card you chose, 
you have to drink a certain shot or a mixed drink or whatever, wow. right? So yeah. if you chose like a jack of hearts, it's like a tequila shot. Or if you chose a jack of spades, it's a freaking gin and tonic or something. You got to kill it before you leave the bar. Yeah. All the, it, was, it was nuts. It it's, was nuts. That's amazing. And y'all did that. We yeah. did it. It was all us. So, so, so folks, when you hire the Cork Brothers, you hire photographers, videographers, <laughs> Party starters. Yeah, no, it's true, man. Party starters. That's like, what I hear. We yeah. start yeah. the party yeah. and we like keep it going. Because mm -hmm. at some point we just drew a card and we knew they were gonna take tequila. We already had the tequila part. Yeah. Oh shit, it's another tequila. Yeah. Party. <laughs> and at a certain point we just hit the list of like, all right, you're taking this because we ran out of different liquor because you know they provided it because it's in a company building. It's like, oh, that's a tequila shot too. Shit, you gotta take it. <laughs> oh, that's a Merlot shot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it leads to like one of our biggest philosophy is we want to provide the most value mm -hmm. every shoot we do it behind the scenes we're story posting throughout we're showing them love we're reposting months after like yo we had a great time working with these guys so it builds a lot of like brand loyalty that's mm -hmm. awesome that's uh, awesome y'all killing it man y'all killing it. who's your i mean where i mean you were in hospitality yeah i heard that you wrote poetry yeah. Oh, yeah, I write poetry. Man. You still write poetry. Oh, yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. you kick a poet real. Little, you want a yeah. poem? Yeah, give us a little poem. You got something quick? Give oh, us a you. poem. Put you on the spot. You, give us a poem. He's, he's always right. ready. All right, I'll, I'll give you guys um like half of a poem. Right. Uh, half a poem. Okay, yeah, we, right. we got my man Mike. Let's do it. <clears throat> Mike Corkum. Mike Corkum, y'all. Here we go, guys. Let's do it. Here we go. Um, his gifts couldn't be clearer, but still he lets mediocrity nearer. Sometimes I hate the man in the mirror. I hate his weakness, passivity, proclivity to harmful activities. I hate being in the vicinity, having to pretend to be anything for what's in me. I hate that I tend to be, I hate that I tend to see. Wait, oh wait, hold up. This is the first poem I ever wrote. Oh, no, keep going. Proclivity. Um, I hate that he tends to be. Ah, shit. Shit, it's... We put him on the spot. Yeah, he put me on the spot. They had a couple <laughs> gin and tonics in. <laughs> he, that was a rhyme. <laughs> yeah, there it is. There it, is. it was a good ass rhyme. Um, I, I don't see you rhyme too. Hell yeah! No, no, I got, I got you the freestyles going too. <laughs> yeah. Um, Hold on, wait. We gotta. Oh yeah, put the snaps. Put the snaps. That was still good shit, man. That was good. Now, when you say you write poetry right now, are you like, are you like a spoken word guy? Are you like going out and yeah? Because I, I, I saw you kind of got in the moment right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. No, I love, I love spoken word. And I wish I could have finished that poem because it um. It really picks up. The well, you know, you can always come back. Oh yeah, no, I'll, I'll you probably come back. I mean, I'll just get my phone and just and just read one. But um, that, no, even what caught me was when you said, "I look at the man in the mirror." That yeah. caught me. Yeah. That ca if that catches mostly everybody. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. when you're talking, it's like the man in the mirror is like, "Oh, that's me." Yeah. Because yeah. you always have to face yourself. Exactly. And really give an account of yourself. Yep. yep. A lot, a lot of my poetry stems from thoughts where it's like, um, I, I call them thoughts that, that tuck you in at night. Mm. When you're okay. in bed, right before you're falling asleep, everything else is finished for the day. What's keeping you up for those 10 minutes, an hour, two hours, however however long it takes to go to sleep? Yep. Um, and those are the thoughts that I write a lot of my poetry on. So a lot, a lot of my introspective poetry is about things I see in myself like those weaknesses mm. like and then I was saying the weakness specificity proclivity to harmful activities mm -hmm. um, di different things like exactly. that um, exactly that, that's something I think constantly everybody um, everybody everybody has to, to fight with but, yeah. but me especially is like um, fight with it every day and, and, and we're fight talking about all the time a table with entrepreneurs around right mm -hmm. yeah Pacivity exactly is the biggest thing that stops people from being entrepreneurs mm -hmm. yeah. and that stops people from, who even start being entrepreneurs from being successful entrepreneurs yeah because they give up they're like yeah. oh this shit is not for me exactly yeah. Yeah. they don't go and just like introduce themselves to somebody mm -hmm. force the handshake they don't go in and say hey i can provide you value and really try to kill that cell they, yeah. they're mm -hmm. passive mm -hmm. you know it's, it's interesting you say that because i've learned that you have that creative part of your brain mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then you also have that part of your brain that protects you yep. from stuff. Mm. So the, your, that part of your brain be like, yeah, but you may want to kind of back off off of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that tends to be the loud, that yeah. tends to be the loud voice versus that creative part. Because well, that, that, the loud voice is trying to protect you. 
Yeah. Even though it's not, but yeah. it's trying to protect you. Exactly. Yeah. It's it's just a natural reaction. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, you might not want to do that because your feelings might get hurt. Mm-hmm. They might tell you mm-hmm. no. Yeah. And for a lot of people, that's that's a very loud a very loud voice versus that creative that creative voice yeah. that got you to that point. Because I tell people all of this stuff, cameras, phones, cars we drive, it was somebody's creativity. It was yeah. their, their right. mind. Yeah. And they just, they, they said, you know what? I'm just going to keep moving forward. Yeah. Amazing. And the reason that happens is we're taught as a society and our parents, their natural instinct is to protect us. And so a lot of parents were like, yeah, you could go try photography, but go get that four-year degree, get in debt. And don't enjoy that four years of your life when you could be going out four years of photography and be one of the best photographers out there. I haven't even done photography and videography for four years. What? If I had started before. I'm going to tell everybody right now. I'm going to tell everybody. Right now, and uh, I'm going to get all social right now. But I still feel like college is one of the. While it's necessary for fu- some professions, Very I still think for it's. Some. Some of the biggest bullshit ever, because like it's almost like we've gotten to a point in society where everybody needs to go to college. No, everybody yeah. does not need to go to college you to don't. be successful. Mm-hmm. You don't. You do Case not need. Point, it. I did not go to college. There you go. Thank yeah. you. I got you a two point five in school. Mm-hmm. The only reason I graduated is because my parents owned a bakery, mm-hmm. and I brought the teachers' kids. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever my grade was slipping, and then I saw it to just get. Past. So you mean to tell me you got some donuts floating around <laughs> over there? <laughs> I'm, I don't see none. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you figure out what your passion is. Exactly. And that 10 years I spent in the restaurant industry was invaluable. And that's one of the reasons our business is successful. Because I learned how to talk to people, build relationships. Mm-hmm. I learned how to go above and beyond giving people value. Working in restaurants. Amazing. They don't teach that. You, they don't teach that. Schools. No. My, early, my, my first 10 years out of school was actually managing movie theaters. Yeah. And it's a very similar type of environment. 100%. And you you learn quickly how to maneuver and do things. And one thing they give you, it's, and I'm sure you probably had the same thing, is that they help train. They te- they taught yeah. a lot, and yeah. I learned a lot. Yeah. yeah. From that exactly. stuff that you don't you don't learn in school. Exactly. And yeah. I started managing at 18 years old, and so that translate to now when we're in business meetings with like Sierra Nevada or something. I don't feel like a smaller person. Like I belong in. This oh yeah, you're like mm-hmm. I've seen this before. I can yeah. do this. I can yeah. handle this. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So. I mean, I, I I always I always throw kudos to to Stick Man One because he takes that corporate mindset experience yeah. and put it to this business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know, a lot of people are like, oh well, let's just do this. Let's do. This. Reggie will send me a spreadsheet, a, a, a breakdown, and all that, and I'm like, "All right, let's go." <laughs> and and it, and it, it is amazing because some people are afraid of that. They're afraid that you know. They love the boardroom meetings. They love, well, they, that's yeah. what they do. But guess what? You can translate that into your passion. That's right. You can translate that. Translate that into your passion. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You see how yeah. I said passion? Yeah. I said but emphasis. Passion. Yeah. Passion. <laughs> no, it's, it, it's true. And a lot of people, the reason they love their corporate jobs is they like to be safe. Well, it and is they, safe. And they get a paycheck every two no, weeks or whatever. It, yeah, yeah, it's safe. But is it? That's safe. Something. No, but you could be let go at any moment. Yeah, absolutely. So, was 2020 safe for a lot of people? Nobody. Yeah. 2020 was safe for nobody. Yeah. So, so here's a here's a story I've only told in one on one conversations with people. Uh oh, oh shit. No more hot tub. We, <laughs> no, no, we back in the hot tub. Back, <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's, it's the hot tub now. Damn, <laughs> damn, <laughs> damn. To make this into a hot tub. <laughs> I'm chilling the bubbles up above the nipple. Let's go. Yeah, I can't uh, wait. Let's do this. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Let's do this. I'm just gonna be quiet and let y'all yeah. go. Yeah, so, um... Oh, hold on, hold on. Hold that thought. Yep. Hold that thought. Yep. You might need some ice. I might need a little more gin. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> he said might need some <laughs> gin. Shit. <laughs> you, we back. Where we? Where did we leave off at? Mm. Mike was about to tell us his one of... A story that you didn't even know. Yeah. yeah. A story I didn't know. Yeah, you said he was going to drop something that... You have only told in one-on-one conversations exactly. in the past. Exactly. Um, hey, first time on the Stickman Podcast, y'all. Y'all check it out. Hell yeah. Um, yo, um, so we were talking about the, uh, like, it, it's very safe to go that corporate route. It's yeah. very safe. Route, different well, the like people that. think it's safe. Yeah, mm-hmm. and they think it's safe, and then, you know, you have some sense of, or some mirage of stability, right, um, that you don't get from entrepreneurship, almost rightfully so, because entrepreneurship is chaos. 
But anyway, it is. Um, <laughs> Believe yeah, me, it is. It, it is. Um, going into the story, so I always knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur since I was, I think, seven. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember I had an aunt, and she was just a few years older than my than my mom, and yeah, you know, she was hyper educated. Got degrees from Harvard. One of those Columbia, folks. Yeah, masters, yeah, doctorates, masters, all that do- shit. Doctorates, all yeah, these things. Yeah. And I knew from a young age. She, went, she had multiple ideas she wanted to start on herself, but she kept going back to school and de- kept doing the corporate thing for years and years and years. And I think she was 52 a few years ago. She was 52 and she got diagnosed with colon cancer. Oh. And it had spread beyond oh, where they no. could treat it. Oh, man. And she died about a year later. She had, Damn. I think, three higher ed degrees um, wow. from the top universities in mm-hmm. the world. Um, and I, and my mom told me this, um, I think about a couple of years ago, she told me, um, your aunt Rita, she said, no matter what, tell, they, they, my family calls me Mikey. She's like, tell, mm-hmm. tell Mikey that, you know, he should keep pursuing his own thing because, and this is when she was on her deathbed, because I wanted to, but I kept getting stopped by like all this corporate stuff. And I got trapped in this like, like corporate and education wheel instead of actually doing what she wanted to do in her life. Wow. Like right, like probably a couple months before she died. Wow. She told my mom this, my mom told me that um, as I was talking to her uh, about, you know, what we're doing with the cork bros and, um, you know, successor I was She's like, I'm so glad you guys are doing that and you're, you guys kept pursuing that even during the hard times mm-hmm. because you know, even your aunt, like, you know, before she got colon cancer, everybody would say, oh, she's a, she's a great success. But in her own mind, she hadn't fulfilled what she wanted to fulfill. And then she was taken away before she thought she would go. Mm. Amazing. Damn. Mm. And she was aware of that, clearly. Yeah, exactly. She knew she was going to die. Like, there's there's a point for, I think, about six months we knew. Uh, it was only a matter of time. Um, there's there's nothing else that could be done. Right. So that's, dude, thank you. Number one, thank you for sharing. Yeah, thank you. Number two, that's, that's so, like, wow. It makes me reexamine my life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It really does. Because, uh, you know, I feel like I've come to, well, first of all, let me say this. I've dabbled in entrepreneurship throughout my entire life because I kind of knew at a young age I wanted to do it. But I'll I'll be honest, though, I feel like it hasn't been until the last few years Mm -hmm. that I've had the discipline to actually be successful at it. I I don't think I had a discipline for a long time. Mm -hmm. And now I feel like I finally got the discipline. So there's a couple, another element to it Mm -hmm. that I think people got to realize is that number one is I think you got to go for it, but also understand that a lot of people think when they get into, oh, I want to leave a corporate job just because it's going to be easier. It's not easier. No. Matter of fact, it challenges you to be more disciplined than you ever been before in your life. Yeah. It's crazy. You're leaving a 40 hour a week job for about an 80 hour a week job. That's right. Exactly. And guess what? The 40 hour week job actually creates more discipline because, you know, if you don't show up from eight to five, you're going to get fired. Yeah. (laughs) So you kind of whereas when you're an entrepreneur, some people think, oh, I get to make my own schedule and they take that to the extreme. (laughs) You know, they don't think about how you need to really. You still got to grind. Exactly. You still got to grind. I mean, look, I've I've done it. I, I, I stepped away. I had like very fast success early and. I was like, I'm good, but the I'm good part caught up to me. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's the if you use the, if you use the same discipline that you have to go punch a clock for yourself, you will have success. You will because if you use it, I got to get up at this time and do this, do this, do this, and but it's amazing how. If you put an hour into yourself every day, you can't even me- um, measure the amount of benefit you get from that. Mm-hmm. But you have to do that daily, yeah. and then continue to it. continue to build on it. Yeah. Whether it's reading a book for uh, fifteen or twenty minutes, just sitting down, uh, writing out a plan, uh, take that plan and and actually work that plan. You know, but like you said, sometimes, you know, you can get caught up and be like, oh, it's going to be easy. No, it's it's not. It it's easy to do. But it's also easy 
not to do. Not do. Yeah. It's easier. Yeah, it's it's easier, easier not, not to do. To do. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. The hardest thing to do is to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> 100%, 100%. Andrew always says this when we, uh, we talk to a lot of people. He's like, I haven't worked a day uh, for three years now and things like that. So it's like, it's easy to be an entrepreneur in the sense of like, you understand what you're building towards. It's like when you're in school and the teacher's telling you, learn the Pythagorean theorem. And you're like, what the fuck do I need the Pythagorean theorem? Yeah, exactly. You know, but if you're like, in this situation, you're going to need it, all right, you're going to learn it and you're going to master it. Um, but as you're saying, it's easy not to do too. Mm -hmm. I could call Andrew any day and be like, hey, I'm feeling sick, we shouldn't meet today. And you know, knowing the trust that we have with each other, I'm like, all right, cool. It's not yeah, he, he, he know he means it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. But exactly. you could abuse that. And then, yeah. it, and then it well, also, people abuse it in corporate America, we know that. 100%. Yeah. And so like between the four of us, y'all two have each other and we have each other. So like, you know, there's a level of accountability there, but for a lot of solo entrepreneurs, you don't even have to give a reason for why you can't yep. do it today or do it you don't have to account you're accountable to no one exactly. but yourself and it's tough and they take themselves too lightly yeah yeah <laughs> and that exactly way. yeah so what is next for the cork brothers man what can we expect man you guys are doing your shit we loving this puff sip chat conversation oh, it's yeah. amazing even though one of us is not puffy but we'll take that another thing <laughs> But he's sipping like a he's mofo. Sipping like <laughs> he's sipping got like a... Got me tipsy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Is there anything left in that we, bottle? We're running there? through that handle of Bombay, baby. Yeah. I don't see a bottle in it's, it's like, all. Oh, it's, it's going to your hair or something. <laughs> your hair is getting long. No. <laughs> exactly. I'm having just freaking... I'll have some dreads by the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's next for us is we're going to keep building brand for the rest of this year. And then we want to go national. Man. We want to build. You want to have brand. a marketing company that's national, that's focused yeah. on digital marketing. Yep. Yeah. We want that's to, awesome. Like, right now, we're really focusing on Atlanta because if we can prove our stuff here in Atlanta, you can, now you we can make it Austin, in Texas. Dude, we, we feel the same way about Stickman. Same thing. If you can, Atlanta has evolved to the point where it's almost like, you know how you used to say back in New York? In America. You know how you say, mm -hmm. you can make it in New York, yeah, you can make it yeah. anywhere? If you can make it in Atlanta, yeah. you can make it anywhere. I yeah, feel like that's truly the, uh, yeah. uh, it's a Atlanta's true statement. A, now. Atlanta's a boot camp. Yeah, yeah. That's that's my opinion. Atlanta's a boot camp. Yep. yep. No, it's true. Um, yeah, we want to. We're building brand. We're building our skills continuously right now. Um, Andrew Never and I, stop learning. Never. Yeah. Andrew and I continuously have conversations where we're like, "Yo, we need to introduce this aspect to our videos. We need to introduce this aspect to our marketing. We need to start talking to this type of influencer." Blah 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 to increase our value that we can add to different people um yeah i mean not just that we want to figure out local then go national because like right now we're working with some national brands for already the yeah you already too. are yeah well yeah hell, you dropped the yelp shit on us oh I mean, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Like all casual and shit yeah, yelp. Yeah. Uh, yelp, yeah. <laughs> no, no, it. so um so so a lot of like and and i think a lot of businesses um, should think about this too, especially if you think about starting your business or you're still in the nascent stages. It's like build your brand, make people want you. There's so much, so much time we spent doing sales days, mm -hmm. trying to make people want us. Whereas the past three, four, I think, I think this whole year we haven't done a sales day. We haven't, we haven't done a sales day this whole year. Yeah, eight of our last ten clients reached out to us. Yeah, people are reaching out to us now because they want us, they've heard about us, they've seen our work with other of their competitors, things like that. And that's what you need to do is you need to build your portfolio, you need to build your brand, whether it's tangible or not, mm -hmm. and then people are gonna start wanting you. Mm. And now when you tell people your prices, they're not starting to negotiate with you. Like, all right, let me hit you up in a week once I find the funds. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I know I need you yeah. because yeah. you bring the value. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And the, the number powerful. one most yeah, important thing that we've done is we've been patient. Like a lot of people like, oh, we're going to build Atlanta for three months and then we're going national. We've been doing this brand building play for over a year now. Mm -hmm. um, and we're still about a year out from wanting to go national because we're patient. Like, mm -hmm. You have to be. Yeah. What, yeah. What, what are we rushing for? <laughs> like uh, hey, finding e success now, you know? Even in Stickman, people have asked, hey, we, Stickman, we follow you guys. Why don't you come up here to New York? Why don't you come up here to whatever? Yeah. And I'm like, ugh, you know, yeah, exactly. that's great, but I don't need, I'm not even ready for that. Yeah, yeah right. exactly. Um, but yeah, so I, I get that. And yeah. right now you gotta, you're perfecting your craft still. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And right now, when you, it just makes when you do go national that much more powerful. Yeah. You'll be in exactly. a position to actually take advantage of that yep. success. You know. Mm -hmm. So. Exactly. This is good shit, man. Yeah. 
Is yeah, that's shit. that's what's next for Cork Bros. Is um, we're building, we're growing, we're learning. Like right. we're a young company, we mm. we gotta learn, we gotta right. get better, and and that's the biggest thing for us. I don't know why this just popped in my head, but you guys remember remind me of Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. Uh oh. Okay. Don't worry about it if you don't know them. We're too young, man. Yeah, I don't, don't know. know. So they produce they Janet produce Jackson. Prince. Mm. They produce Prince. They produce Prince. Mm. It, it's it's just I I just get that vibe from you guys, and they just blew up, and they they were the hottest they, they, thing they were, smoking. This is way before your time, but they were yeah. they were some bad boys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would appreciate that compliment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So so good shit, man. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put you guys out. So in about three weeks. The Stickman, we have our very first Stickman Smoker Series. Hey. Mm-hmm. So we're going to do a little, it's a lounge about 10 minutes from here. Nice. They're going to be smoking it up yep. and have some music. It's going to be a music slash networking event with exactly. cigars and whiskey. Nice. So we love you guys to be there. We'll be there. So come on. We ain't going to be there. We're going to be in there like swimwear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I want you to do your Cork Brothers thing. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. You're going to you gonna have, you got free reign to have. You have like carte it. blanche. Carte blanche. <laughs> Creative. We'll be there being stupid ourselves. Freedom. Yeah. Uh, that means blank check. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. We'll take that sink as payment up there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, yeah some people might have a big explosion. problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, man. We are here with the Cork Brothers. We kicking it in the Stickman Studios, my deck. We got my man Andrew. We got Mike. Together they make up the Cork Brothers. The dog you, diggity. You gotta baby. check them out on there Instagram. You gotta say it, Reggie. You gotta say it. They my dog diggity. Hey, hey, man, my dog diggity. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Damn, I feel better. I feel better already. Yeah. <laughs> I feel better already. So, hey, man, I'm here with Stickman Simp. We kicking it. You know what we do. We puff sip, chat, repeat. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Hit that alert bell to know, let it notify you when you do it again. Look out for our next cigar review, our next whiskey review. We doing all that shit. So, and I'm Stickman number one. And I'm here. Until the next time. Puff sip, chat, repeat. We out. Cheers. Cheers. Let's do it. All right. Boom. Boom, boom. 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 Stickman and Cork Brothers. Let's do it. Woo. There it is, gents. That was clean, man.